Juventus visited Stamford Bridge on the 23rd of November 2021 for a Champions League football match. And in the end, it wasn't even close. And we will talk about it today. <laughs> to review the match with me is none other but Dan from Ish, another football podcast. Dan, welcome back to Chelsea Perspective. Thank you for having me again, Coachella. It's really great to be back and a privilege to talk about Oh, it was an excellent match. Yeah, it was. It was. And, and more importantly, it's always, always awesome to talk football with you. Yeah, so Dan, let's, let's get into, into it straight away. So um, 4-0 Chelsea, was that the result you expected? No, to be honest, quite no. Um, it's weird for me to say that because it's probably like, it should be a yes and a no, because given how well the Chelsea played against Leicester, I could say perhaps yes, um, given the, the standard performance that we saw against Leicester. I thought Champions League night, you know, under the lights, Juventus, even though they're nursing a couple of injuries um, and have a few absences, I thought perhaps no, because uh, this is, you know, Juventus beat us last time. So perhaps they'll come with some kind of tactical plan with Max Allegri, smart man he, that he is. Um, so that to try and stifle uh, Chelsea. And I thought, I did think we would win, um, but I didn't think that it would be as comprehensive as it was. Uh, Com it was yeah, quite, comprehensive indeed, go ahead. It was quite a sensational performance. You know, just uh, from the minute, from minute one, uh, Chelsea was, was just almost totally dominant. Uh, I don't think Juventus had a much uh, in the way of a significant chance other than Morata chip. And I think Chelsea just territorially possessed uh, possession based um, in terms of the chances, the quality of the chances, the just overall standard of play, uh, the heat maps as well, uh, in terms of the position on the pitch, they were just totally dominant in almost every facet of the game. And it was the kind of vintage uh, European performance that we've seen uh, from Chelsea in days, in years past, you know, in the mid 2000s. Um, and in uh, it's actually one that we've been missing for a while, you know. Mid 2000s was probably the the standard for for Chelsea before we eventually won the Champions League in 2012. Um, but that last night was really quite a signal um, of of this Chelsea now and how it's very much in keeping with, uh, as I say, the the highest probably the highest standard Chelsea I've ever seen in that sort of 2004 to 2007 era. Yeah, it was it was a brilliant performance overall by. I mean, you could say the whole team, it was a professional performance and, and, and they did us all proud. So, obviously, there's no argument. It, it was a deserved win. So, the question is, did Chelsea pull off such a flawless win against such a, a strong side as, as uh, Juventus? How, how did that happen? I think it, it, it's got a lot to do with the attacking combinations and the fluidity that Chelsea have uh, sort of built up over the last few weeks. Uh, it was really unfortunate that uh, Romelu Lukaku got injured, but uh, what it did allow, I think, Thomas Tuchel's time to sort of build on uh, what we had been practicing or working on last season with the kind of mobile forwards and, uh, you know, things like that. Like, obviously, having, having Kai Havertz in the role there, um, up top, but he, he, was, he wasn't there last night. We had Christian Pulisic uh, in the role instead. And it was really, really fluid. And uh, very, the combinations were sensational. Just the movement of the players. And uh, we had a notable difficulty in the first time, first time we played Juventus with uh, their low block and how deep they sat um, in the sense that uh, it was hard for Chelsea to cover an opportunity and try and uh, sort of bring about some goal, goal mouth action. But last night we saw just an abundance of goal mouth action and uh, it was really quite brilliant to see. Yeah, I have to agree with you because, uh, I mean, whereas we miss uh, uh, Lukaku, you know, there are some cases where had he been there, he'd put away the chances. But the truth is, uh, we, uh, we, our attack seemed to be more fluid in his absence. Uh, there's no, I'm not arguing by any means that he's not a good player, but we seem to be more fluid in, a, in our attack in his absence, and that showed. You know, they say numbers don't lie. We scored more goals in his absence 
we've also created more chances in his absence. And you could argue, had he been part of the game, Rhys James' uh, role would have been limited somewhat to only putting in crosses for him to finish, you know. But the fluidity is something, you know, that, you know, it brings joy. It's, 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 it's so sweet to watch. And, and thank you very much for taking some time to answer that. So... Dan, uh, some people would argue that Juve, that they were a weak inside. Is that the case, or, or were Chelsea just too good for them? I think it's a bit of uh, more that Chelsea were too good for them, but I think they had some significant absences. Obviously, Paolo Dybala started on the bench. They didn't have Chiellini, they didn't have Danilo, uh, who was significant defensive uh, presence. Um, but I think it's probably they didn't have Aaron Ramsey as well. I think they had about five players who were out. Um, and I think it's it's a bit of, as I said, it's a bit of both. But more so, I'll lean to, maybe it's a little bit of bias because I'm a Chelsea fan, but I think I'd lean more to that Chelsea was so good rather than Juventus were poor. You know, Juventus essentially set up in a similar way to the first game uh, that they actually won 1-0 where they sat rather deep and uh, tried to close the spaces and not allow Chelsea any opportunity to play. But um, just I think Chelsea were relentless in their chance creation, the movement, um, the combinations. Callum Hudson-Odoi was uh, electric on the left wing. Rhys James was constantly wide and bullying people, uh, running past people, putting in crosses, um, coming into midfield. You know, there are lots of, there's lots of really fluid attacking. Hakim Ziyech was pitching out, picking out passes. Um, there was just a lot of attacking combinations in this game that we didn't see in the first leg. I think. In the, or in the first game. In the first game, we saw a lot of dominance of possession, um, but Chelsea was sort of pinned around Juventus's box without ha- being able to play through. So what we saw now, this time, was a lot of playing through this time, you know, operating in the half spaces, in tight spaces, like you saw for the third goal, Callum Hudson, mm-hmm. probably my favorite one. Um, Rupert Loftus-Cheek was a big uh, plus in this as well with his movement uh, in, on the ball and uh, his ability to go past players. But it's just, I, th- I felt like everything clicked uh, against Juventus. And uh, I think this is a Chelsea uh, machine that is operating at uh, full tilt. And it's, it's really quite awesome to see them playing this way. Yeah, everything clicked perfectly indeed. And you could argue, yeah, I, I lean towards more Chelsea be, we are so good that uh, Juve couldn't stop them than they were a depleted team because they still had Morata, they had Debala, they had, uh, what's this, Chiesa. So they're still pretty much strong team. It just, I, I mean, it brings up, it highlights the same argument against uh, that people discussed after, uh, after, uh, after we demolished uh, Leicester, you could put it that way. The Leicester were in the Leicester they used to be. I think the argument should be that Chelsea were just too good for them. And thank you so much for taking some time to answer that question. So, so Dan, now let's be uh, sincere here. What if Morata's chipped attempt went in? We'd be talking about a different outcome here, don't you think? In terms of the game, I don't think so. Maybe in terms of the context at the time, yes. Um, I think Chelsea was still on top uh, at the at the point, but it's it's, it's difficult to say because when um, things like that happen, they often change the momentum, they change the mentality uh, of the players at the time. So a one a one all game is very different to a two or three nil game because obviously after that incident, Chelsea went on to score another three goals. They were already leading one nil, and um, yeah, that trip had it gone in, perhaps it would have changed the context of the game. But I think Chelsea were playing so well potentially the, the likelihood of them uh, going on to score more goals was always uh, a strong one, given that their chance generation was so high. I mean, in total, I think they had 21 shots in the game, uh, eight on target. Um, and they just seemed to be almost relentless in their ability to assault Juventus' goal and just to try and attempt to carve out some opportunities. So I think perhaps we still would have won, maybe not by as comprehensive a margin, um, but uh, I think the quality and the application was very much there uh, on the day. Yeah, as excellent as, as Chelsea were on, were on that day, you could argue that had they gotten an equalizer with that uh, chipped attempt, it, it, I mean, 
you, there's no telling what we, what the outcome would be because usually teams that get an equalizer seem to have the momentum and Chelsea will be all out to seek a winning goal. And then that's a huge risk. But uh, we, we, I'm happy it ended the way it did. Uh, I still, we can't not take anything away from Chelsea. Like you've mentioned, they created so many chances that they still would have won the game. And that's a, a fair enough argument for me. So uh, another question for you, Dan, is, is this. How, how would you rate the team's overall performance? Uh, very easily, 10 out of 10. I think it's, uh, 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Were they that it. flawless? No, no player underperformed for you? I don't think so. No, none of the players that I watched, no. I don't think any of them under, underperformed. Okay, the that, player, that's, that's, the only... that's a fair enough argument. Go ahead. I think this was the best game I've seen Chelsea play this season and certainly one of the better games I've seen them play in the last decade or so. It was really, I mean, really you could, good. Yeah, you could argue that, but for me, I'd say... If you ask me, I'd say Christian Pulisic, Dean, it's another chance that 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 is that that was presented to him that, that he didn't really stake a claim for a starting place. He didn't really take it. Yeah, you could say uh, maybe Pulisic is the one. I'm just saying if, in a collective sense, I would give the whole team a, a 10 out of 10. Yeah, from an individual perspective. So for yeah. you, you're still saying no player underperformed? I think Christian Pulisic did his job on the day and he was uh, great in an unfamiliar false nine role. Um, he didn't have any shots on target in the game, uh, nothing really significant, but I think he played his role well. You know, he did so your argument is because he played as a false nine, that's not a familiar role for him? Yeah, it's not entirely familiar, so I think perhaps that maybe negatively impacted his game, but uh, I think he was selfless enough that he was able to perform uh, the role to a good standard and to bring his other teammates like Hudson Odoi and Ziyech into play so that they could be effective. Often Kai Havertz does that kind of thing. You know, where he has not probably the most outstanding game, but he's more selfless in his ability to bring in his teammates. So I think Pulisic had a very similar similar impact to Havertz when uh, he played as the as the nine. Yeah, overall, I mean, uh, you could argue that that's, that's that's a fair enough argument. He's he was, uh, you know, utilizing in a position that he's not familiar with. So, but that's fine. Overall, people are calling it the, the Chelsea Academy Show, and rightly so. What do you? I mean, I want to get your thoughts on that. I think if you look at the goal scorers, three out of the four of them were from the Chelsea Academy. Ruben Lofts' cheek also got the assist for Kalamats and Adoy's goal. Um, it wouldn't be remiss to call Chelsea Cobham FC at the moment, you know, because uh, the Cobham graduates are, are really showing an exceptional standard of performance. And they're essentially living up to the potential that many, many fans often knew that uh, Cobham lads had, you know, for years, not only just this crop. But um, I, I think it, it's important also to realize that the quality of the other players on show, like Thiago Silva was exceptional uh, last night, especially with the goal line clearance, just his overall passing and his reading of the game. I thought Jorginho was excellent as well. Um, ben Chilwell, um, who hopefully is okay. Um, very sad to see him get injured. We wish him all the best. But uh, yeah, Ben Chilwell, I thought Ziyech was very good. Um, Kante before he went off with an injury, and we hope he's okay as well. Um, and obviously, it, it, Edward Mendy was uh, was exceptional. But I mean, it's just it's very heartwarming as a Chelsea fan to see uh, players like Callum Hudson-Odoi, Reese James, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, Trevor Chalova, who got his first Champions League goal. Um, these are sort of homegrown lads, as they were, and you know they're they're sort of the heart and soul of the the club, having been there since they were very very young. It's just very, very rewarding. It's probably the, the purest thing you could see as a, as a football fan to see uh, someone who's been at your club for so long come and perform to a high standard and to deliver. You know, that's all fans really want is to see a member of their, it's almost one of their own, like, you know, a proper fan who's made it as a player. You know, it's, it's the ideal dream. So I think uh, Chelsea have the perfect blend at the moment of uh, recruited talent and Grown talent, homegrown talent. I think it's a very good mix at the moment, but perhaps the common lads are just shining a little bit more at the moment. 
Yeah, overall, I mean, if you look at it, it, it's, it is rightly a, a, a Copham show or let's say Chelsea Academy show, if you like, because the whole, the four goals, if you look at them, each of them had a contribution from a Chelsea Academy player directly or indirectly. You know, the last goal that started from Rhys James's uh, crossfield uh, pass, was that was quick thinking ball. from him. Yeah, after yeah. recovering the ball from an attempted... I mean, that, that, that uh, the Juventus tried to play over the line. He got it and looked up quickly and whipped it. And that was, that was great to see. So, but overall, Dan, who, who would you say is, my, is the man of the match? Uh, I think it's got to go to Reese James, doesn't it? Yeah, I think that was... Abs- really absolutely, awesome. I agree with it's you. The most, the completely exceptional performance. I think the standard of play that Reese James is showing now is just probably beyond what even most of us thought he was capable of. I mean, this is an exceptional all-round footballer, is Reese James. He can do everything. He's big, he's strong, he's, his technique is unbelievable, his delivery into the box, his shooting, his passing, uh, his just game intelligence, uh, his movement. I, I could go on and on and on, but I think he's just showing an absolutely exceptional standard of performance. And and he's and he started and he started uh, trying to I mean, unlike before when he's usually reluctant to take opponents on, he does that quite well right now. He does it very often, more often than actually usual, and and that's good to see. And that has added a lot to his game. Uh, I mean, that is awesome to see. And like you said, he's set uh, the stand, the level at which he's playing right now is what most people didn't expect from him and. He's been great, so good to watch. What I like the most about him is his chested, chested control whenever the ball comes on the air, how he drops it with his chest is so, so good to see. And that, but that's, I mean, that's, that's for me what I like the most to, to watch him do because no matter how high the ball goes, he drops it with his chest so calmly you think there's a magnet on his chest, you know. Yeah, but that's by the way, Dan, and... I appreciate you finding time to join me for us to present this uh, match preview to your fans, my fans, and and to the Chelsea fans overall. Please, can you take some time and tell them about each another football podcast because I've listened to it myself and it's fun. I mean, the expertise of those that that the the um the guests you've had is amazing and. Please take some time, tell them so they can go check out check it out themselves. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity to talk about it. Um, our little podcast is just uh, three three of three of us, myself the host, and two of my friends. Um, we just get together and we talk about the Premier League uh, issues in the Premier League, and we just have a have a lot of fun analyzing the games. Uh, we preview things, we review things, we talk about significant events during the week, and we have a couple of interesting segments that we. Uh, visit uh, throughout the, the, the Premier League world um, just from on a week-to-week basis. And uh, it's very casual, just a little bit of fun uh, that we like to go through every week. And it's called uh, Aish, another football podcast, available on all the three platforms, uh, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Uh, we usually record on a Thursday, and it's out on a Friday, um, only up to episode five, which will be recorded tomorrow. Um, and, yeah, we're just having a little bit of fun and hopefully uh, entertaining some people along the way. Yeah, it is fun indeed. And, and the, the casual approach to the conversation, even though you, when you talk something technical on the show, is so amazing to listen to. It was, I mean, I had to, when I started listening to it, I didn't even stop until I finished the whole available episode. And I can assure you, go try it. You will not be disappointed. But more importantly, I will provide the complete information for each another football podcast in the description section below whenever the video is ready. So, Dan, again, it's been an absolute pleasure reviewing this match with you. And I will look to bring you back to our Chelsea perspective for another show. Thank you very much again, my friend. It's been a a privilege and always wonderful to talk football with you. Thank you for having me again. I look forward to next time.